गुरु कृपा के बला नमस्ते एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू सत्संग टुडे सदगुरु श्री मुजी बाबा की जय Our suffering is because that which is the most obvious gets missed, and we're trying to make that one which is not real, real, or better. That which is most obvious to you. Seems to be forgotten. Maybe because it is so obvious, but that one would never existed. Just an idea. We try to keep improving. So much so that we start to believe that uh, this life belongs to that non-existent one. but this is not true yes this life is yours but not you personally so surrender is just to say that this life belongs to god an inquiry is just to see that this life belongs to god it doesn't matter which term you use it can be god self guru and without this confusion as i keep reminding everyone that uh, suffering is only confusion and the only confusion ever is confusion about who you are that which we consider ourselves to be is not it even if we have a very spiritual consideration now what is it that is so simple so clear so obvious that it doesn't need a single step the mind is a resistance against this the mind is saying that this is not it i will show you how to get better to get to it this is not enough it must be something else what is the life of one who is constantly trying to make life better but never meeting life as it is
what is the life of one who is running after the train even after boarding the train now we've heard that the self is ever present and it is all encompassing complete in every way does that require chasing then how will you chase that which always is how will you even remain in it it always is so the truth is here and now this isness is it now what is it that we want every moment is presenting the truth to you what are you asking for you are asking for it your way actually even when it comes your way Yes, and is it? Oh, it would be actually a little better if it also had this. <coughs> What if there was no time? Not that there is no time. There's, there's, like there is a big rush. Not like that. What if there was no time? time was not there with time the idea of change would also go and the sages have reminded us that time is just an idea it is the same for space what you are remains untouched by these notional concepts what you take yourself to be is constrained by these mm-hmm. 
Now, this is the trick. No? The tip is that you don't have to change your consideration from one to the other. You just have to drop the false consideration. You don't have to pick up the true. Because many are trying to live from the truth and things like this. So we've made truth also, again, in our image then, what we think it should be. Just drop the followers. And what is the better news? That even that dropping is done now. So now it is done for you. But it will come with an invitation any moment. Saying, but what about me? Now the thing is that even the worldly con considerations you don't run, you don't, even if you presume yourself to be the separate one, you don't manage them better by taking yourself to be that. If I can make just this one point for today, it would be enough. Because this is the doubt that will come. How will I run my life? But my problems are real. Let's presume for a moment that it is your life and your problems are here. By considering yourself to be the ego, they are not better managed. So dropping this identification has no downside. And it is only when this all sense of identity is uh, invited to be dropped. Do we start feeling that, uh, oh, we are doing such a great job of running our life. How will it happen without it? Mostly we are moping about our life otherwise. But when it is said, forget about this false idea you have about yourself. Then we start feeling like, how am I going to run my life? But if you really look, you will find that this, what we call grace, has been running it anyway. So, there is no downside. You will not lose anything of value by letting go of identity. So, you may lose your ability to suffer, to cling on to your limitedness. And maybe that is what seems so alien to us now. At least it, maybe it feels like at least I can hang on to my suffering. But he's saying, let go of identity, but don't hang on to anything else. So it is just like that let go joke that Guruji told us. You say, what should I do? The master says, let go. You say, how can I let go? What will happen to me? 
and the master says let go and it may seem, seem like a joke the last part but uh, i'm going to say it a bit more seriously now. then we say and the master just keeps saying let go let go all of us actually end up asking so is there anyone else out there who can help us because he is definitely not helping For your reality, life is the simplest. For your ignorance, life has too many variables for you to manage. You start fixing one part of life, the other part starts falling apart. You start fixing other, then the third part starts falling apart. It is too much for our idea of ourselves to be able to manage. But when we find what we are. then all this parts will keep playing out but without your attachment your clinging to them it will not seem like such a burden dear father after investigation i have come to the firm, firm conclusion that i am neither the body nor the mind but extremely subtle awareness witness yet this does not mean the body mind has got over all its problems and become super blissful absorbed in the self it still runs after better lifestyle etc it gets depressed happy etc there is still suffering to suffer and to conclude is the same thing and this point i want to spend a few minutes on probably it may seem to you that in satsang i am saying to you that you must come to a very very solid conclusion that you are awareness is it so it may seem like the purpose is to move from the idea i am the person to a new idea i am awareness but this recognition which i am speaking of this truth that i am pointing to cannot be captured in an idea including the idea that i am awareness so when it is said that you are not that it is meant to dissolve the personal idea of yourself but not to pick up a new conclusion you see because even like in this example what is happening is that the minute you come to this you try to use this conclusion but i am awareness and therefore that should mean that i am free from suffering i should not be depressed these things should not happen in my life everything should become a certain way now whatever has so many shoulds cannot be the truth it cannot be freedom freedom means freedom no free if it has so many shoulds then how what kind of freedom is that then it's all the shoulds are defining is a box so suffering means identity and the identity can be built on even the highest notion you see what are you suffering from in this example but i see that i am awareness but why is this body still chasing good stuff pleasure you see? so 
to be empty of all position to not be in opposition to anything is what i'm pointing to so, and whenever it is pointed to you that you are the self or you are awareness or you are uh, god it is so that the limited idea you have about yourself can be negated and can be dropped it is not so that we become certain about a new idea the truth cannot be spoken and therefore it cannot be captured in any idea every idea can be spoken that's it that's what we're doing speaking ideas but the truth cannot be spoken now all the suffering also that we feel like we endure is just ideas that we have about ourselves we cannot say anything about the past we cannot even say whether there is one like i told you time itself is just motion and nobody is suffering right now you see so it is only when we give ourselves this history Many times it becomes like this that um, feel that the me is central to the story, and we feel like the me used to consider itself to be me, but now the me considers itself to be awareness. So now life should become better for the me. She said, "But why is it not helping me?" She said, "So this centrality of the non-existent one has to." go in a way is it we can use materialism for our selfishness and we can use spirituality for our selfishness is it is it but true spirituality is the dropping of this selfishness which is what what do you mean selfishness what about me So now that I found awareness, what should that mean for me? Now that you are finding awareness, what should that mean for you? And if the answer is truly blank, then no trouble. But if the answer is, oh, now that I found that I am awareness, my life should be better. So these ploys, these tricks, they do not work. And it is my job to keep pointing them out because we don't realize the tricks. we still feel like but that is i used to be chasing materialistic things i used to consider myself to be the body mind but there was so much suffering in that but I, now i changed my conviction and now i'm convinced that i am awareness but nothing happened nothing changed still suffering is happening is it so who's that at the center of the story has anything ever changed for awareness all these states of life and death and waking and dream and sleep this 
do they happen to awareness? So the ego tries to co-opt awareness into its play. It? So it's a strange play. The self is playing as if it is the ego and as the ego wants to uh, play as if it is finding the self and therefore that should help the ego in some way. This is what uh, Bhagwan was talking about and he was saying that the thief dressed up as the policeman pretending to catch the thief. So whose story is this really? I was taking myself to be a person, but now I'm taking myself to be awareness. <coughs> but my life is not improving. Whose story is that? You see? And it is not that we have not had the experience or the insight about ourselves. All of us have. Even those in not, not in satsang have. You see? It is just that we use even those insights to somehow come to benefit me. And that is why one of the most common questions in the world, if you ask, so if somebody asks me, what do you share in satsang? And I say, we just look at who we are around the question of self-inquiry, who am I? Sometimes an answer comes like that. And then they say, okay, so then what will they get once they find out? And many of us also feel like I came into satsang for peace or joy or bliss or eternal life or something. Now, you say the truth is just this, but I don't find any such benefit coming to me. So the idea that the discovery of the truth is supposed to help the non-existent one It's false. How can the truth help the false? You see, so ego is false. Say self-awareness, God is truth. Now, in the discovery of the truth, the false should be helped. So that's that's the what make what our mind makes us believe. See? So it is the same cat story. The cat tried to get material things and try to be forever happy, and then the tri cat tried to get the final nectar of immortal truths, but so that the cat would be happy. See? But in the finding of this immortal truths. Does the cat remain? So, if it doesn't remain, how can it be helped? So, how is the discovery of the truth meant to help you, the non-existent one? Now you may be hearing and coming to a conclusion that what he's saying is that once you stop caring about yourself, that is the time where you will really be helped. You see? That he's just playing a trick on you. He's saying that you will not be helped so that once you feel like I don't have to be helped, I'll actually be helped. <laughs> 
No, I am just saying truth for truth's sake, no matter what happened. And strangely enough, in the world, we pretend to be like that, truth for truth's sake, no matter what the suffering that comes because of that, or whatever the consequences. It's just like, if you had children, you see, and suppose you had teenage children, like I do, and then uh, you were suspecting that one of your children is uh, drinking or smoking or doing drugs or something like that, won't you tell them, tell me the truth, I don't care. You see, even if that real truth might not provide you ease, but more suffering, you say, but tell me the truth. You see, but this truth of your unchanging nature, you see, you feel like it must do something for you in a good way. That's why sometimes I feel it is better if it was just called Satchit. <laughs> how much of your focus goes on Sat and Chit and how much goes on Ananda? 100% Ananda. <laughs> <laughs> but the Ananda which is being spoken about over there is what you are. Sachitananda is the same thing. Now, if you try to fit it into your idea of ananda or joy, then it seems like it is not. You see? But in that process, you've already obscured Sachitananda in trying to benchmark it against your idea of what joy should be. It is already seemingly obscure. It is never really lost. Right now your very existence is the purest joy you will experience ever. The other objective joy like the sweetness of fruits or something like that will come and go. It's not such a big deal. But the joy of your very existence is of existence of that which is beyond even being and not being. Before I am, there is no greater joy because this joy is actually beyond even experience. You see, I know it won't fit into our usual definition of joy. It's like, what is the point of that joy which is not even experience? But give it a chance. That ananda, that joy, which is your very nature, <clears throat> if that was lost, you could not taste any other joy. What has to be there for you to experience anything? So all experiences depend on you. But the one that you consider yourself to be is completely dependent on your experiences. The reality is that all experiences depend on you. you see? But what you take yourself to be is very dependent on your experience. You wake up in the morning and start experience hunting. It's like, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is not so nice. This is very good. This should be more. This should be less. I hope it becomes like this. I hope my days don't always go like this. Really? So, so dependent on the experiencing is the ego. But you are that 
on which experiences depend for their existence. Perception depends for its existence. Even being depends for its existence. You are that. So, instead of checking what is the quality of the experience or what am I experiencing, you should actually check what is there on top of which you can have this thing that you call an experience. What is the prerequisite for an experience to happen? You are. Hmm? No? <laughs> So that, which is the substratum of all experiences, that seems to be forgotten. And the idea that we have that I should only have these kind of experiences constantly speaking, what should walk into your door? You see? Who should walk into your house? You see? Has made us paranoid fearful, angry. Imagine what a life it would be if constantly you're just worried about who's walking through your door. Because yeah. every moment of our life is like that. Something is playing out. And if you start becoming worried about these things, then you'll become angry, fearful, paranoid. So surrender is to let go, not judge anything based on our idea of what it should be. That is surrender. Says, Father, no, they don't happen to awareness. Yes, it's good. So let's look at this a little deeper. When we say that there is still suffering, but there is recognition of the truth, what is it that, how, is, how does that actually play out? What is suffering? We've often said there is actually no such thing as suffering itself. It is just a term that we use to define other Things like uh, guilt, pride, unworthiness, regret, remorse. Um, what else? What do we suffer from? Now, in all of these, what is needed? Identification. We are not saying, oh, God should not have done that. Oh, maybe sometimes we are actually. But um, we sometimes are saying, God should not have done that to me. But we are not really saying all is one. There is one awareness, one self, one God. And that one should not have done this or should not have done that. I wish life had gone a bit differently. We are not speaking as the self. You see? So without this identification, how do you actually suffer? Even in pain, how do we suffer? by our uh, resistance to it, I say this should not be. You see, pain is pain. That's why they say pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. So what is the distinction being made there? The distinction only is what is the openness with which it is accepted. So suffering is like the clenched fist. You see? Openness is empty of resistance in which the truth of yourself is apparent. Now, how do you clench and open at the same time? 
how can you suffer without identification so if you are awareness if you are the self how can you feel guilty or proud or unworthy or remorseful or uh, apprehensive fearful all of this needs for you to identify as a limited one who is subject to all of these things of the world of course i am nowhere am i proposing that you should now pick up this new idea that i should not suffer because you will suffer from that also i am just saying that all of this has an idea at the center of it which is the idea of me but this me is not part of your inherent experience is not part of your life inherently it is just a made up thing if you woke up one morning and you were confident that you were a frog is it then how should we help you suppose we are a group of friends okay and we are discussing right and uh, one friend he just had this conviction suddenly that he is a frog is it then he stopped being our friend so he went away so the other friends are now discussing is it if this ever happens to me please help me don't let me go so how should you be helped if you ever fall into this misidentification as a frog you decide is it what would you want me to tell you he says give me one slap <laughs> zen that is zen way <laughs> then let's let's think, think of some non violent <laughs> you are not a frog you are not a frog <laughs> now all this whatever you will give as answers is what you are hearing in satsang every day is it is just that i take these examples so that they seem a bit exaggerated so as a frog but person is more ludicrous than frog you may say that considering yourself to be a person is less ludicrous than considering yourself to be a frog i will tell you how it is more ludicrous at least frog you have seen person you have never seen who is this one is it the one that owns a body that one that has relationship the one that has money in the bank account the one that has judgments about manager at work the one that has uh, wants freedom i have never met and yet we consider that so what is more ludicrous at least frog you can say okay body frog all these things you can tangibly say is it but this person find the person who wants freedom can you find such a one body doesn't want freedom hmm? so who is the one that you take yourself to be that is even less tangible than our idea of a frog is the most strangest most absurd idea what is the one who wants freedom look like you want freedom no no <laughs> so that one that wants freedom what does that one look like huh <laughs> the body what would body do with freedom no 
ice cream would be better <laughs> is it some chocolate ice cream would be better idea for the body this freedom thing which is beyond time and space what will the body do beyond time and space that which itself is just an object in time and space what will that fathom of beyond time and space it's only like i want to say like the yeah. head the head yeah, wants freedom. The face. I know it sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but it's like trying to cling to some, like the mind's trying to cling to some part of this body and, and think it. It's really, we come up with very strange ideas and, <laughs> and, um, no, no, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm saying generally as humanity, because there's a very popular notion, even today, I'm shocked sometimes, you see, that uh, it is our organs which are manifesting the world. Huh? But our organs are part of the world. Yeah. So our organs are manifesting our organs also. <laughs> so these are very strange uh, sort of ideas. Yeah. Like the brain. The brain is manifesting the rest of the world. Yeah. So uh, the brain is separate from the world. It is lying in limbo somewhere and then there's a world. <laughs> it is not material like the world, is it? Like that. So we can have that. So what manifested that? So, so we can have these ideas, but actually better to admit that we don't know. We don't know. Who wants freedom? And it's a very uh, natural feeling, the sense that I am somebody sitting inside my head. Yeah? But uh, when we look at it, it is just not possible. Because uh, a brain surgeon would have found me by now, some, or found some person sitting, finally, <laughs> this is the person. Really? There's no such entity there. You see? And the minute you put on a virtual reality headset or you have a dream or something like that, it is a different head. So which head are you inside? It is because this centrality of visual perspective, as I call it, seems centered around this seeming object. That's why we have But the minute... Uh, uh, a dream starts as another central object and it seems like but I'm inside that head or in today's world you don't even need to have a dream you can put on a headset and get transported in a different world when you check on your body or in these new environments check in a mirror you have different head so which head are we inside and as what if we are something inside our head what would we be like a minuscule insect or something. <laughs> so it is these sensations and these perceptions which seem to create this illusion or delusion of our limitedness, of our location or duration. But we are beyond these things. So just to maybe belabor this example a little more, because it is quite pervasive in humanity to have this sort of idea. So, what is our experience of our head? There's a beautiful actually teacher, I forget his name, who had this experiment called on having no head. And uh, it was not an intellectual exper experiment, it was just really spontaneous. You have no head right now. At best, you have a little bit of a nose which you can experience. And all there is, is just space. And that is what your experience is like, more like. It is not as if you are something which is contained inside a head, you know? then you'll be surrounded by the head stuff. It is not like that. It's your experience of yourself is mostly spacious. So he said, you have no head right now. It is just space. 
No, you can't think about it. <laughs> and that is your experience. What do you experience here? Unless you put this sensation, then it feels like, okay, there is something solid here, but otherwise you're experiencing space. There's a sensation called ache around huh? the head. Huh? If there is a sensation called ache around the head, that's when uh, it's a little more obvious. The sensation that we have labeled as an ache. Yes. If it feels like headache or ear ache or nose ache or any ache, it seems like it gives more tangibility to that object. But if you investigate that, do you find yourself to be something that is contained within these sensations? Or do you find that these sensations are contained within you? So the sensation of the head, and they are more palpable if there is a headache or something. So the, those contain you. Then that would mean that that sensational boundary then becomes your boundary. That means you're only on one side of the sensation, not on that side. But observe your experience. You will see that the sensation is completely contained within you. And it does not bind anything. You are not more or less this side or that side. So, and uh, it can seem like it is easier to do with the eyes closed, but actually that just a uh, pervasive idea again that we built up. How am I more in this and this than in the space in the middle? I don't see it. How am I contained more inside this thing and this thing? Then the space in the middle. This is these are just ideas that we've learned. I see that these sensations are experienced within my space, within my being. So is this space or also experienced within my being? So how is it that this is more me than this space or that camera or that body in front? I don't see. What makes the defining characteristics? What makes the separating line between me and the other? You know this story, the old story in India. Yeah. One disciple, he was with the master for a few years, doing very well. He was with the master, but then something happened and he had to get back into the world. Then the master gave him his blessing and said, okay, okay. You have some things to do in the world, you do them and then you come back. So he goes into the world and these are the olden times. So at this uh, man, he was out of the ashram many, many years, didn't come back. So one of the master was wondering what happened to this boy, he was supposed to come back after some time. Is it? But we know what happened, Maya basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so this master then goes looking for this man in the world. Is it? So, but he doesn't want to disturb that man's life. Is it? He's like, okay, if he's settled and he doesn't really want um, this, so I, let me not disturb him. I'm just going to go and see how he's doing. You see, so he goes in a disguise, like a beggar. So he goes like the hunchback beggar, and then he sees. Um, um, he, then he goes to the village, and when he goes to the village, then he sees that at the same time that he sees this man, the king is also going in his procession, you see? and the king is riding an elephant. You see? So. The guru then goes to this man and says, Sir, what is happening here? And this man is irritated. He's like, But can't you see the king is having the procession? He says, Sir, which one is the king? <laughs> he says, You stupid man. <laughs> you have no idea about these things. The one on top is the king and the one below is the elephant. You see? So he says, um, this guru says, so what is top and what is bottom? So then, the, by then this man who is the disciple is very irritated. So he's upset. So he actually climbs on top of the beggar. You see, the, the guru dresses the beggar and says, now you see, I am on top and you are below. You see? He says, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It's much clearer to me. You see? But just one question is left now. Which one is I and which one is you? 
and in that moment the disciple realized that this is nobody but his master and then he gets down and begs forgiveness and he gets back on track so to speak you see so we might have all these notions of up and down and uh, all these material ideas about the world but what separates i and you me and other what defines your separating line i i keep saying almost every day now that if you truly truly consider yourself to be just the body then what are you doing here even to say that i want to be rid of my identification as the body is already to be rid of it then you are no longer considering yourself to be the body you are not saying the body has to be rid, rid of its identification with the body is it saying i want to be rid of my identification with the body finish you are no longer considering yourself to be the body but this new one that you are considering yourself to be is which one if it was apparent to you that you are the body then you would not even call it an identification so instant way you say i want to be rid of body identification you already taking yourself to be something other than body question says father do you mean that if suffering occurs to the body man no so yeah. let me elaborate some more suffering is not happening suffering is our, based on our interpretation of the of the perception is it so we can say for a moment that perception is happening is it okay let's take this classic example right so you might experience for a moment what we call anger is it anger may come is it so we may even say that anger can come without identification is it so but how does anger become resentment resentment is suffering is it is in the arising of this perception that we label anger provisionally is there resentment inherent in that is it so the arising of these perceptions mixed with our identity our notions about what they are and what should and should not be that is what is called suffering is it so suffering is never happening to the body pain may be happening other experiences that we have labeled actually none of this is the provisionally we are talking could be happening but all this that we call suffering like we said guilt pride remorse unworthiness apprehension resentment all of these have the idea that i am the body mind mixed into that but they never actually happening to the body is it so this is the crude critical distinction between pain and suffering that is why it is said that pain is inevitable but suffering is optional you see if suffering was inherent in the pain itself you wouldn't even need to have two terms for it <laughs> so the arising of the sensation in themselves is not suffering the resistance or the resistance seeming like its opposite that this should just come and stay we see our attachment or our uh, pushing things away is what is called suffering
Okay, another one says, in me I get a strong feeling that I am in ashram, always in satsang, that is con conducive atmosphere, then I will easily be established in the self. I know this is just an idea, kindly blast, placing at your feet. Yes, happy to blast this one. <laughs> is it? It is uh, not necessary. In India, we have um, seen so many, so many ashram where um, things seem to become about everything else except being yourself. Yes. Seem to become about uh, a lot of other things. So it is not really about the physical um, circumstances, the material, um, phenomenal experiences. Yes. Wherever you are, whatever the condition of your body may be, it is the most conducive atmosphere for this recognition. God is not messing up your recipe. He's cooking you perfectly fine. So, don't have to renounce the world, don't have to renounce family, work, nothing has to be renounced. You see? Just renounce your next thought. And not that also not by picking up a new thought. No, no, you go away. It is renounce next thought, let it come and go. Renounce everything in your openness. Renounce your mind in your openness. You see? not in your resistance. That is only renunciation that is needed. Where do you have to go to find yourself? Where do you lose yourself? Who is the one that loses themselves? Can you lose that one? Who loses and finds? Lose yourself. Can you do it? Do not lose yourself. But if you try and make an experience out of yourself, then it will become a, another coming and going. If you make an experience out of the truth, then it seems like sometimes truth comes, sometimes it goes. Like, I, I just want to be with the truth. You see? So, how you will be with the truth? You made an experience out of it. What value is that truth which comes and goes? No. Yeah, because you've explained, you've said so many times, so patiently as always. Like, um, it's like I listened to the first thought that came was like, <laughs> So I said, that. and it's like, it's almost like if I get it out, then you know how much it's just to say. But also, if you're just allowing them to come and go, why pick one up? It's yes, but like, now then why are you picking all these? Yeah, so that's why I wasn't sure if I should just let that go. But it's just, I don't want it to be, 
I appreciate I appreciate what you're saying, but I didn't feel any <laughs> any this thing about. <laughs> so this positionlessness is um, like a bit uncomfortable at times. Is it? Should I like this or should I be like that? Is it? This like this or like that, like that. Neither. Oh, then I should just be the witness. No, no, not even that. Then I should just be. No, no, not even that. But then what are you saying? Nothing. <laughs> it leaves us very uh, naked in a way, very empty. Because all these tactics, they maybe work temporarily. You might have an idea that uh, I have to just be. When did you first hear just be? Or a simpler example is, uh, when did you first hear about the power of now? At least 10 years, everyone? 10 years or even five years? <laughs> so how is it going since then? You realize, you discovered a secret that in the now there is no trouble. There is no suffering possible in the, in the now. Is it? And then? Is it? So, what happens? The, what happens is that our intention or our position, even to try and be in the now, just gets in the way of now. In the same way, when we hear just be, then we try to, and the try to then becomes the new position. So something is more immediate, is more before you can decide, it already is. This way or that way, before you can take a call. Empty of our positions, empty of our judgments, only the self is apparent. So, don't worry about the um, right way to be or wrong way to be. It's all fine. All this activity, whatever it is, is fine. As long as you are not taking any position too seriously, it's all. How to how to try to not try to be? What? How to try to not try to just be? So you hear that, okay, just be also won't work, to try and remain in the now also won't work. So then do we pick up a new trying that now I should be empty of even these? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> what is empty of all our trying or not trying? And forget about what about me.
It's all good, to be honest. Okay, Abhay says, thank you for allowing me to listen to you where there are no words. Thank you for allowing me to love you where there are no you and I. Good. And next one says, thank you, Father, for dissolving this frog persona. <laughs> <laughs> Your presence and satsang is just grace, love and gratitude. Thank you, my dear. Then the uh, next one says, Father, the me is found to be only a collection of ideas. Sometimes it feels very real and imposing to Yes, but that time is never now. Though sometimes is never now. So maybe they are just imagined. Why bother so much with it? that which is not now? What strange time that is when, which is not, never now. In now, right now. So, what if that not only is it a collection of ideas, but the collection but the idea that it is imposing also maybe is an idea. Like the idea that my mind is too strong or can be very strong. Itself is just an idea. Maybe it is the weakest mind that you have, but it, the only bullet it has left stored up is to say, my mind is very strong. We don't know, how do we measure? So come more and more into your innocence. And innocence means not being attached to what we think we know. Anything that is uh, worth knowing anyway can't be known. Next one says, tormented more by the idea of fear rather than the experience. Yes. The idea of fear is the fear. It is not the experience. You know, many times we are so not looking forward to something happening and we spend weeks <coughs> worrying about that but when it happens it's fine usually so this torment of the apprehension the anxiety of it should not be that way i hope it is not that way usually is much more In the actual perception of anything there is really no trouble because no perception in itself can hurt you in any way. What does the perception have to be for it to hurt the reality of you? The biggest fire, if it is burnt in this world, can it touch the reality of you? 
what has to happen in the realm of perception for you to be heard by it? So like that creature in the Yoga Vashish which is just troubling itself by its own notions, by its own ideas, the thousand hands of this creature are nothing but its own ideas about itself. So who is this creature? It is representing us in our human existence. <laughs> we are only hurting ourselves with our concepts of what should be and what should not be. What is better, what is worse. If you are not trying at all to get to any better state and not worried about coming into any worse state. How would life be? Not trying to come into any better state How worried about anything worse. How is that? Possible or no? Huh? <laughs> what would you do with the mind's offer? The mind's offers are always with the claim that I am going to make your life better or at least prevent it from getting worse. Now, if you no longer had that trouble, the mind says, oh, just do this spiritual practice for 55 days and you will become a much better spiritual seeker. But if the idea of better itself was not there, because what is just is Then the, then the attachment to this idea will go. I'm, again, I'm emphasizing that I'm not speaking about us not doing a spiritual practice or something like that. I'm just saying that the idea can come and go, but whatever activity has to unfold will unfold anyway. But without judgment, this play of life can continue. Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Sadhguru Shri Anantha Ji Ki Jai. Guru Kripa Ki Baba.